Hey, what's up? It's Brian. Thank you for checking out this video. Please subscribe to this channel and like this. And I just wanted to tell you guys a story today. It's about calling 911 for the first time. I had never done it before. The only time that I ever saw anybody call 911 was when my dad called 911 when our woods caught on fire. That was crazy. So I just want to give you guys an in-depth detail of my first experience. Plus, I always forget things, so this will be good for me, too. It's a mutual benefit thing. So I have an 8 a.m. class called Advertising. I should know what that's called. Let me look that up. The class is called ADV 205. We use this book. It's called Advertising Theory. And it's an 8 a.m. class, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I know. I was falling asleep that morning, but after class, on my way back to the apartment, I was listening to the song Blessings by Chance the Rapper. <clears throat> I swear, it was just at the part where it was like, Blessings keep falling in my lap. At that part, I was at the intersection. So I was at the intersection of Red Cedar Road and South Shaw Lane. I was riding down Red Cedar Road, and then across South Shaw Lane, there were these two people on the ground, and it didn't look normal, and I realized they had both crashed into each other head on. So I ran across the street, I jumped off my bike, and I almost fell over, and I had to cut off traffic a little bit, but I ran over to them. There were a bunch of people surrounding the two people that were on the ground. This guy had been going north, and the girl was going south, and I guess neither of them, well, I didn't get to talk to them, but I'll get to that in a second, but there were a bunch of people surrounding them, and then... No one was doing anything. The girl was screaming. She was just holding her head and screaming. And I didn't know that I had to do anything or I was gonna do anything. I looked around and I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I looked at everybody, everybody else didn't know what to do. And I was thinking, let's get them some ice because the girl had been holding her head and screaming for at least like a minute. The guy had a gushing blood, like he had blood just gushing out of his forehead. Gushing out of his forehead. And that was when I realized that I needed to call 911 because I didn't know what else to do at that point. I was thinking, get some ice, get something to like wrap his head. I was thinking almost that it was gonna be as bad as that I had to like wrap his head with like my shirt or something. It was just gushing. Gushing. He had lacerations on his legs and on his arm and it was really bad. And he was like, no, no, dude, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. But it was just gushing. Gushing. Like, I was like, honestly, I had never seen that much blood in my life. The only time I saw that much blood was from lifeguarding when a woman had fallen and hit her head on the pavement. But, and I thought that was a lot, which was a lot, but this was more. So my lifeguarding instincts kicked in. I was like, I need to assess the situation, make sure it's safe. And then I need to call 911 and report back to myself. You would get that if you lifeguard. Jailers for life. Mm -mm. Wait. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, jail is bom, 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 bom. Yeah, check it. Woo! And my lifeguarding instincts kicked in and I called 911 because that's what you do when someone falls and hits their head and they're bleeding and the girl is not, she won't stop screaming. And then I called 911 and I think there is a fire station. Let me check. Yeah, so the East Lansing Fire Department is actually on West Shaw Lane, which was the road that it happened at. So I called 911. I was like, Bop, 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 three buttons. And I was like, they're like, 911, what's your emergency? I think that's what they said. And I was like, hi, uh, uh, I'm at West Shaw Lane, and I had to look at the street signs and Red Cedar Road. I'm actually surprised they still have street signs. I didn't say that. Um, two bikers, they hit each other. I'm nervous. These two bikers hit each other, and I, uh, um, I don't, I, they're not, they're girls like holding her head and screaming, and the guy's bleeding, and she was like, do you need an ambulance? Like, like she gets this all the time. And I was like, yes, because I didn't know what else to do in that situation. And then they were there within like a minute. But now this girl has been on the ground holding her head for like three minutes, screaming the whole time, like in pain. And she was just like, ah, just ah, ah, like that. And I didn't know what else to do. And the police got there. And by the time the police got there, there was just a big puddle of blood. And I have a picture of that right here. I have a picture of it. That kid lost a lot of blood. If he had given blood that day, he probably would have passed out. But the girl didn't stop screaming until she got in the ambulance. The EMT people took both kids into the ambulance. And as the kid, as the guy was getting taken by the EMT officers to the vehicle, he was like, thank you, dude. Thank you for calling 911. And he was just bleeding out of his head. 
and they asked him if he could remember the accident and he said no because he couldn't I doubt the girl could they probably both got concussions like for sure and yeah they, they took him into the ambulance and I was with this other girl and we're just standing there waiting for people to see if they needed a statement or anything and the police arrived at the scene and we told the police what happened and we tried to put napkins down on the blood and tell the kids walking past not to step in the blood and we stayed around for a little bit the police were like you're good and then I got on my bike and I rode back home to my apartment to here and that's about it but I can tell you that it was a really good feeling to help uh, people that needed it. I really hope that those kids are okay because I didn't get to talk to them or even know their name. I just saw them, called 911, and then they got taken away. No idea if they're okay, but I'm sure they are. The EMT guy said they would be. It was crazy, and I was wide awake. I was actually going to go home and nap, but then that happened, and I was just wired for the rest of the day. And I was even thinking, like, dude, I need to change my major to like health science and become a doctor because that was such a life-changing experience and it was you just I feel like as people we get a lot of satisfaction out of knowing that we're useful and we get a lot of satisfaction out of helping people and that was helping someone firsthand and it felt really good and it was scary calling 911 for the first time I didn't ever have to do that in my 20 years of life I've never had to call 911 hopefully never again yeah, I'd never called 911 ever. So the first time that I ever saw anyone call 911 was when my forest at home caught on fire. The power was out and then a tree had fallen on the power lines, but then DTE turned the power on while the tree was on the lines and the tree caught on fire. And then it started exploding, which was crazy. And I guess the time that we should have called 911 was when I was younger. I don't know what age I was, but I was eating a lifesaver. It's ironic, I think. And the lifesaver went down the wrong pipe. I swallowed it instantly. And it got stuck in my windpipe. And then my dad just started punching me in the back. And like, just just punching my back. And it hurt so bad. Like, I don't think my dad knows how to do CPR. Like. Some people just don't know, but that was not how you do it because I know how you do it and that was wrong. You need to do the Heimlich maneuvers where you get behind somebody and just twist them. Actually, I'll teach you something right now because it could be helpful. So basically you get up behind somebody, you stick your legs, you're, you stick a leg between their legs and then you make your hand into a fist and you stick it on their belly button. You just go bah, 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 so bah, bah. And uh, hopefully you get whatever is in their throat to pop out. That could save life. That is not a alternative to CPR training, so do not quote me on that. But that's the gist if you're ever in that situation. And definitely call 911 if you don't know what you're doing, like I did during my fall semester of 2018. Also, if you want to have experiences like that, definitely become a lifeguard because you have a ton of experiences like that, especially if you work at a wave pool. You'll be jumping in the pool and saving kids and adults all the time. So I would definitely recommend that. It's very enjoyable and you get paid for it. And you get to be in the sun all day. And it's mentally draining and physically draining and spiritually draining. <laughs> no, but it's really fun to do it. But I guess that's all I have for this video. If you liked it, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. It would really help me out. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Have a great day. Hey, Zach. Are you taking a shower right now? What's that? Are you taking a shower? Yeah. Can oh, you, when you get out of the shower, can you subscribe to my YouTube channel? Yeah, absolutely, man. Thanks. Yeah, sorry I had to leave it. I'll definitely do that. <laughs> Thanks. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm done. I'm done with showering anyways. I just think it's funny that I'm asking you to subscribe to my channel. Oh, no, that's, that's normal, bro. Hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Uh, hi. <laughs> uh, can you write on the mirror and tell people what to do? Don't get her pizza. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you.